This is your host, the Apostle Reuben, with another short Bible lesson. Again, brothers and sisters, when you read Paul's letters, you have to break them down as well. The Christians don't. They expect you to follow a vision. Look at me as we go now. The book of Galatians 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Let's, we're going to come back to Galatians 5. Liberty now. I want you to pay attention. Liberty. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 45. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Wait a minute. Hmm. David, with the Spirit, says, I will walk at liberty, for I seek, which means keep thy laws. David says, when I keep the laws, I'm walking at liberty. Liberty. Not bondage. Let's, let's turn the page. Let's, let's turn the page. Psalms 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Ah, so God's law is the truth. Wait a minute now. Verse 151. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. So the truth is the law. So what did our Messiah say? I want to get to John. John chapter 8. Let's just turn the page. I wasn't looking to go here, but I am now. John chapter 8. Verse 31, then said the Messiah to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ah, what was the truth according to the Bible? The law. And that law shall make you free. Now again, I know a lot of you guys, you know, when you see the um, Old Testament being read, Oh, you're reading the Old Testament. The truth changed when Christ came. Again, this is where I read it. Paul, the apostle, wrote this. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth, truth in the law. So the, the truth is still in the law. And what did Christ say? Let's go back to, let's go back to John. Right here. Let's go back to John. John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ah, so the truth, which is the law, shall make you free. So what are these Christians talking about the law is bondage? Let's go again. James chapter 1, verse 25, but whoso looketh unto the perfect law of liberty. Ah, what is the law of liberty? Are you reading this with me, brothers and sisters? Law of liberty. So the law is liberty. But the Christians keep calling it bondage for some reason. The Bible says the law is liberty. And continueth therein. Whoso looketh at the perfect law of liberty, and James says, and continueth therein. So to continue in the law of liberty and not stop. He, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Wow. Law of liberty. Let's go down. I want you to look at this. Because James 2 and 8, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as a transgressor. Because when you have respect for these men that don't present you the Bible, you just got respect for them and not what they know. That's respect to persons, and that's a sin. This is what Acts 10, 34 and 35 is based off. God is no respect of person like men is. He doesn't respect persons. Men do, and that's a sin. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend at one point, he is guilty of all. For one, for, watch this, for he that saith, do not commit adultery, and also do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law, because the Ten Commandments is the transgression. 
the law that you're transgressing is the Ten Commandments. Watch this, verse 12. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. What law of liberty are they going to be judged by? The Ten Commandments. So obviously the commandments are not bondage. We've read Psalms 119, verse 45. James 1.25, James 2 and 12, and of course, John 8.32, the truth, which is the law, shall make you free. We're looking at law of liberty, law of liberty. So what is Paul talking about? Let's go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free. Liberty was in the law. Woo, I almost forgot. Let's go back to Romans chapter 8. I almost forgot this verse. This here ought to punch the Christian in the kidney. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ the Messiah has made me free. There it is. The law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free, free, which I have liberty from the law of sin and death, which is the temple, the law of condemnation which is mentioned in verse 1. So the law of the spirit of life in Christ the Messiah made him free from the temple. So there is a law that makes you free, as we've been reading. Let's go back. Let's go back to Galatians. Because they don't know what they're talking about. They never break it down. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. That's by the law. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, I want to take a look at Galatians 4.23, because Paul is continuing this letter. But he who was born, well, excuse me, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. What does that mean? After the flesh. 1 Corinthians 10, 18. There was a law that was after the flesh. We got to read it. 1 Corinthians 10, 18. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar. So if they were after the flesh, they took part in the altar, which was sacrifice. So again, Galatians 4.23, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. So bondage was in the law of the flesh, which was the temple, not the Ten Commandments. This is what we be telling y'all. That's why it says, and I want you to pay attention to Acts. Acts chapter 24. I want you to pay attention because it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to show you guys. Acts 24.14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing in all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Paul served according to believing in the things written in the law. He worshiped and believed all things written in the law. And again, Acts 26, 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue to this day witnessing both the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Paul didn't speak nothing but the law and the prophets. But somehow, when we get to Acts, when we get to Acts 15, verse 9, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear? What is that yoke of bondage on the neck? We just read it, brothers and sisters. After the flesh mean the temple, the sacrifice. That was the yoke of bondage. The Ten Commandments were freedom. These things have to be explained to you, brothers and sisters. If they don't, if they're just reading you chapter and verse, if they're just reading by it and not breaking it down, there's a reason for that. And that usually comes from white man philosophy, because he's not interested in blacks learning the Bible anyway. 
And that's the truth of the matter. 